Well, good morning, everyone, and uh, Merry Christmas. We, we should be celebrating Christmas all the time, shouldn't we? And we should also celebrate Easter all the time. And you need both of them. So it's, it's good to worship with you today, be here, and to celebrate uh, the good news of Jesus Christ and his birth. Uh, I want to, first of all, just uh, thank Pastor Bobby uh, for this whole series that we've, we are finishing today, uh, Luke's Christmas Carols. Um, I know it's helped me prepare for Christmas. You know, we, we, we prepare ahead of time by putting decorations up and baking. Well, I don't do the baking. Katie does the baking. I do the eating. And, uh, you know, so we do all of that, but we should celebrate and prepare spiritually as well. So uh, this series has been really good uh, for that, and I really uh, am appreciative of having this uh, series. As we get started, make sure I turned on. Uh, I would, uh, we are going to be looking at chapter, wait a minute, let's get this right. I noticed uh, last Sunday, uh, Katie and I were at her, her parents, and, and we caught just the beginning of the, uh, the live stream, and, and Pastor Brian was having trouble with his click, ah, there it is. Uh, clicker, so I'll probably have trouble too. Uh, we'll find Luke chapter 2, and that's where we're going to camp uh, throughout this, this time. But before we do that, I would invite you to stand, take your Bibles, and we're going to do our, our Bible uh, series. So hold up your Bibles, and then, then remain standing after we're done, and we're going to read the Scripture lesson standing. So let's start. This is my Bible. It is the very Word of God. It is true and without error. It has authority over all peoples, in all places, in all times. Today, there you go, my heart is ready to submit to God's authority. By His grace, I will apply His Word to my life. I stand on His truth for His glory. I can never be the same in Jesus' name. Thank you. Let us turn. Luke chapter 2. I'm going to read verses, uh, actually I'm going to begin at verse 21, and I'm going to read down through uh, verse 35. Luke chapter 2, 31 through, 21 through 35. Now it's appropriate for us to come today and still look at the songs, because this is, this is after Christmas. And what's happening here is after Jesus was born, after Christmas. So, we are continuing with our after Christmas. On the eighth day, when it was time to circumcise Jesus, he, he was named Jesus, the name the angel had given him before he had been conceived. When the time of their purification, according to the law of Moses, had been completed, Joseph and Mary took him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male is to be consecrated to the Lord and to offer a sacrifice in keeping with what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem called Simeon who was righteous and devout. He was waiting for the consolation of Israel and the Holy Spirit was upon him and had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's Christ. Moved by the Spirit, he went into the temple courts. When the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what the custom of the law required, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you now dismiss your servant in peace. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all people a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for the glory to your people Israel. The child's father and mother marveled at what was said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to Mary his mother, This child is destined to cause the falling and rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be spoken against, so that the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed and a sword will pierce your own soul too. Here ends the reading of this uh, portion of God's Word. Let us pray. Father God, thank you. Thank you for speaking to us. 
Thank you that we have the opportunity now to, to continue to worship you and to listen to you and allow you to work in us. Help us to be open to the power of your Holy Spirit. And may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable and guided by your Holy Spirit, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. To kind of set the stage for our, our message, you notice that as I was reading, it starts before Simeon uh, shows up. And it starts first with the, the circumcision of Jesus. At about eight days, they always did the circumcision, and then they gave them the name. You remember uh, a couple of weeks ago, uh, Pastor Jason was preaching about Zechariah, and uh, Zechariah gave the name to his son. His son's name was John. That's right. So at the circumcision, they named him John, and then Zechariah could begin to speak. Joseph was also told to give the name to his son in the name of Jesus, and that is because the name of Jesus means the Lord saves. Here's, here's what it says. In fact, if you, if you can, would you read that with me, please? She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. It's a specific reason for that name, Jesus, Jehovah salvation. So, uh, that's why they were there. Then we pick up in the verse 22, which happens normally about 40 days after. 40 days after the birth, they're supposed to come to the temple for a dedication to consecrate their newborn son, to, in essence, redeem him. That's what the law calls upon. And it's really kind of ironic, really, that here comes Mary and Joseph bringing the baby Jesus to redeem him. They bring two doves. It says two doves are two pigeons. The ironic thing is they're came to redeem the Redeemer. They came and brought two doves and, or two pigeons. We're not sure. That's just what Scripture says. Where when you go back in the Old Testament, it says they were supposed to bring a lamb. But if you're not wealthy enough to bring a lamb, you bring the two doves or pigeons. But it isn't it interesting. They bring, instead of a lamb on four legs, they bring the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. It's not ironic what happens here. They both come to fulfill the law. Now, we come to, to Simeon. And by the way, uh, uh, when we were at Katie's folks, uh, their, their Christmas Eve service was at a different time than here. So I, we watched the live stream uh, from here of the Christmas Eve service. And remember, Pastor Bobby was going through the characters of uh, Christmas, and he got to Simeon, and I wanted to yell out at my phone that I, as I was watching, said, no, don't take my character. <laughs> and he did. <laughs> and I yelled out and at it anyhow, you know. Said, now, that was really pretty stupid, but I did it anyhow. But we don't know a whole lot about Simeon. We're not sure... Who, exactly what was going on with Simeon. So I kind of wondered, like, well, how did Luke know what happened? Well, I think what happened was that Simeon probably told his grandson. His grandson, eventually, Luke found his grandson. We found out what happened. He sees, see, son, I was home, as you well know, and I was sitting there meditating, praying, thinking about the scriptures. And it came to my mind that great prophecy of Isaiah. Oh, unto us a child is born. Unto us the son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders. 
His name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Prince of, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. What's that? Yes, Lord. I'll go now. I'll go to the temple. Hmm. Boy, it's crowded as usual here today. I wonder why the Lord has me here. Ah. Oh, out of my way, out of my way. Oh. Oh, my. Young couple with a baby. Oh. Oh, sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you now let your servant depart in peace. For my eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples. A light of revelation for the Gentiles and for the glory of your people Israel. as they walked away. Simeon, why did God choose Simeon? Warren Wiersbe says about Simeon, Simeon was a man who was led by the Spirit of God taught by the word of God and obedient to the will of God. And therefore, he was privileged to see the salvation of God. It's interesting, Simeon said, before I die, in essence, you will show me. He knew that because God spoke to him. We don't really know how old Simeon was. Tradition says he was 113. Now, I know, Pastor Jason, you think I'm a little old, but I'm not quite 113. <laughs> but maybe that's why Pastor Bobby asked me to do Simeon. I don't know. <laughs> but Simeon, he was a special man. And there are four characteristics I want us to think about about Simeon. Uh, okay, there are four. Believe me, there are four. Ah, there we go. Whoop. Why Simeon? It says right clearly in the scriptures there. It says that he was righteous. The Greek word for righteous here means upright. It has a connotation of behavior towards other people. It also says that he was devout. And that Greek word that's used there is the word for pious. And that is relationship with God. And isn't it interesting that the first two things it talks about is that he was righteous and devout, so his relationship with people and his relationship with God. How critical, how important that was. And God saw that in Simeon. Another characteristic of Simeon, someday I'll learn how to actually use these things, it was that he was waiting if, for what was he waiting? Well, the Scripture says he was waiting for the consolation of Israel. That means he was waiting for the Messiah. Now, most of the people in, in Simeon's day, when they thought of the Messiah, they thought of somebody who was going to come and, and overthrow the Roman rulers, the Romans that had invaded their land, those scoundrels, and throw them out. What about us today? Now, if you asked most people for, for whom or for what do they need freedom, what, what are things that kind of enslave them? They would probably say things like, well, we have this opioid 
epidemic going on and other drugs. There's other addictions such as shopping and gambling or, or what about the addiction of gossip and grumbling? By the way, I think those are addictions. Yeah. Well, what about other things that we, we are enslaved by? How about the memories of something that happened to us in the past or something we did? You know? yeah. Wrong choices, disease, and so on were enslaved. And certainly, we are enslaved by our sin, and we need help from that. We need the chains of our sin to be broken by the Messiah. So that's what he was waiting for, but how was he waiting? Well, I'm certainly he wasn't going around like saying, okay, Lord, hurry up. Uh, it's been long enough. You know, stomping his feet, you know. Hey, well, you know, checking his sundial, <laughs> you know. You know, he puts on his coat, goes out to the car, slams the door, gets back out, runs into the house, slams the door. I'm still waiting. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, amen. Oh, I heard an amen back there. Yay. Now, I don't think Simeon was like me. He was prayerfully, expectantly waiting for what God wanted him to see and to have. He trusted God. He knew that God's timing was always perfect. And so he trusted God. And he kept waiting expectantly. And then the fourth thing was that it says the Holy Spirit was upon him. God's special touch for somebody who's fully committed to him. Now, this was an unusual phrase. We don't think so much about it right now because after Jesus came and he died for our sins, he was buried, he was resurrected and ascended, he said, I'm sending you the Holy Spirit. But this whole concept of the Holy Spirit being upon someone was very unusual up until Jesus' time. He was a special man chosen by God. And because of his character, we read two things that he did. It says it was revealed to him by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit had his attention. He was listening, you know, unlike me most of the time. You know, I think, when I think about that, I think, how does my character block God from speaking to me? And it says also, he went. Yeah, he went. Am I willing to go when God says go? He went. Now, clearly, Simeon went to the temple because God said go. But to actually, when it says he went, he was willing to go wherever God wanted him to go. Am I willing? Am I willing to go wherever God wants me to go? Am I willing to do whatever he wants me to do when I get there? It says he watched and he waited. And then he took the baby Jesus into his arms and into his heart. So the question is, have you? Have you taken Jesus not simply as the baby in a manger, but have you taken him into your heart as the promised Messiah? Not just holding him at arm's length, oh yeah, nice little baby, but taking him into the heart as Savior and Lord. When, G, when Simeon went to the temple, and he was just, I'm, I can just picture him just standing there waiting and looking, and he finally saw. I was thinking about, what about everybody else there in the temple? What did they see? When we come to church on a Sunday morning, what do we see? 
What do I see? Well, what did Simeon see? Uh, okay, we'll get there. Simeon did not see a screen like this and a clicker that uh, is, is balking. Ah, there you go. So what did Simeon see? Well, he saw God's salvation. The reason Jesus was born was to be the one who gives us salvation. It's the only reason he came. He came to bring us salvation as we trust in him, as we open our hearts, as we not just hold him in our arms, but we take him into our hearts. Salvation from the brokenness of our sin. We also know that Simeon saw God's preparation. Part of God's plan goes all the way back to Pastor Bobby's favorite Bible verse passage, and we all know that is Genesis 3, right. You know? But that was part of God's plan. He prepared that from, from before time even began and brought it all the way here to Christmas. He had that preparation for us. And we also see that he saw light to the Gentiles. By the way, let's see. Uh, I know Bob Chasnoff is here because this is his prayer shawl. Uh, I, I bet, where, I didn't, I forget that. Where are you, Bob? Oh, there you are. Bob, I forgot to ask you, did you get this at your bar mitzvah? Yeah. Yeah. So, so we know this is two or three years old. Um, <laughs> but Bob's the only one who's not a Gentile. At least as far as I know, the rest of us are Gentiles. He was the light to the Gentiles. By the way, when I thought of that word light, uh, and uh, it's in the, the Bible verse that I saw first the light of Jesus Christ was John 8, 12. It's, on, it's engraved on this pen, but I know this. John 8, 12, when Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He who follows me will not walk in darkness, will have the light of life. And, and I knew I was in darkness. And I saw his light. And it changed my life forever, for eternity. But he also saw God's glory for Israel. God's heart for his chosen people, Israel. God loves you and me as the church, but he has a special place for Israel. No, none of this replacement stuff, by the way. There's still Israel is on God's heart, and it should be on ours. Simeon. Well, and if you noticed, the, the title uh, for this message includes... Heart, eyes, arms, voice. So let, let me give you what that, what that means, what, uh, what I was thinking, what I believe God wants us to remember. Heart, desiring. We see Simeon's heart in his characteristics. It was clear that his heart was to know God and love him and, and follow him. Remember how Pastor Bobby focused on Mary in that first series, in, first uh, song in this series. And it showed her heart when she said, I am the Lord's servant. May it be to me as you have said. And later she said, my soul glorifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has been mindful of the humble estate of his servant. I have to ask, what is my heart? What about your heart? Is it desiring God? The eyes is looking. Two weeks ago, Pastor Jason spoke about Zechariah, of whom it was said he was a faithful priest, and as a faithful priest, he was certainly looking for the coming Messiah. Obviously, over the years, when you read the scriptures about Simeon, he had been looking for the promised Messiah. 
And when he followed the leading of the Holy Spirit to go into the temple, he kept looking, he kept waiting and looking. And then he saw with his own eyes the one that had been promised to him. What about me? What about you? Am I seeing the Lord? Am I even looking for him, let alone seeing him? Am I looking as in Jesus coming back? And that would sure be nice if before I finish this sentence, he would come back. Wouldn't that be great? Am I looking and seeing Jesus in my day-to-day life? Includes not only the joys, but also the struggles and the pains and the heartaches and the fears and even the daily boring humdrums of life. And we all have the daily boring humdrums of life. But do we see Jesus then? And what about the arms of holding? We read of how Simeon held the baby Jesus. Uh, Last week, Pastor Jason, uh, Pastor Brian rather, uh, talked about the song of the angels sang to the shepherds. And then the shepherds went off and and they hurried to see this baby that was uh, sung to them. And and they fell down and worshipped him, awestruck. Now, it's not in the scriptures, but in my imagination, I can see these shepherds coming in, stinky, smelly shepherds but I can see them holding gently the baby Jesus and passing him from one to the other to the other. Mary and Joseph didn't say, nope, can't touch our baby until you're clean. You have to be sterile, you know. Have to put on the special gowns and all that. No, they didn't do that. He said, yeah. So too with us. Sometimes we think we got to get cleaned up before we can come to God, before we can accept Jesus as our Savior. In fact, that's absolutely impossible. We cannot, cannot clean ourselves up. Only he can. By his shed blood are we cleaned up. That may not be good English, but it's true nonetheless. What about you? What about me? Are we taking Jesus into our hearts? Or again, are we just holding him at arm's length? Or maybe even up close, rocking him, but he's not in our hearts. The real reason for Jesus, for Christmas, is to take him into our hearts. And then finally, it's declaring. Simeon certainly spoke of God's grace and mercy and the holiness and the promise of God when he was seeing and holding the Messiah. And when I think of this, I think of Romans chapter 10, and some of you have got this memorized, but would you read this aloud with me, please? If you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified. And it is with your mouth that you confess and are saved. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Declaring. What about you? Do you confess that Jesus is Lord? Do you confess your need for cleansing, for salvation, for forgiveness, for hope, for life? The shepherds used their voice to tell others what had happened, what they had seen. They praised God with their voices. We sang sang the Christmas carol, go tell it on the mountain. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus is born. Simeon, what a great man. What a great example for us. But the the real example is that he, again, he didn't just hold Jesus at arm's length. He took took him into our hearts, his heart. What about you? If you've never accepted Jesus as your living Savior, and he is alive, 
Today, that would be a Christmas present. Accept him today. We'll be up here in the front. You can, can come and talk with us. If you'd like to, con- to accept him as Savior, or if you need to rededicate your life, maybe you've kind of slid a little bit. Today to be the day. Or what about using your voice to proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ? If you're willing to do that, if you want to do that, why don't you just stand with me and say, yes, Lord, I want to be like Simeon with my heart and with my eyes and with my arms and with my voice. Proclaim Jesus as Savior. If you're willing to do that, will you stand with me, please? Let us pray. Father God, we need you. And we thank you. We thank you that through Jesus Christ, your living Son, we have hope. We thank you for men of old and women of old like Simeon who kept waiting and waiting patiently for you, who listened to you carefully and then took Jesus as his living Messiah. Lord, I would pray for those here today who have not done that yet taken Jesus as their living Savior and made him their Lord, that they had opened their hearts today. And the rest of us, we would allow you as our Savior to be our Lord, which means taking control of our lives. And then you would use our mouths to speak the good news of Jesus Christ to others. Help us not to to just say, okay, there was another worship service, check it off, off we go to do something else. But help us to be transformed by the power of your Holy Spirit and to live for you day in and day out. Father, we thank you for Christmas for Jesus being born for us to break us, to, to break the chains of bondage around us for our sin, to set us free, to send your Holy Spirit to live in us and transform us. And for that, we want to say thank you. We want to sing your praises forevermore. Amen. Joy to the world, the Lord has come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare Him room. And heaven and nature sing, and heaven and nature sing, and heaven and heaven and nature sing. Hallelujah. Amen. Merry Christmas. Uh, There is no equip you, so uh, hang around, talk with one another, and uh, yeah.